Mike Hickson here on the set of GBN Live. We hope you'll stay tuned for our program tonight. We're going to be talking about boycotts, responsible or ridiculous. Stay tuned. Live from the Gospel Broadcasting Network located just outside of Memphis, Tennessee. Be a part of today's episode by calling in or interacting with us through Facebook. Now from Olive Branch, Mississippi, it's GBN Live. Hello and welcome to GBN Live. I'm Mike Hickson, so glad to be with you tonight. We're going to be discussing boycott, responsible or ridiculous. And so we're going to be taking your questions tonight. You can call us or email us. We'd love to hear from you as we discuss this subject tonight. I want to begin by introducing our guest and I'm going to let them introduce themselves tonight if that's okay with you. And so BJ. My name is uh, B.J. Clark. I work with the Memphis School of Preaching. I'm very glad to be here. Glad to have you, B.J. My name is Don Walker, and I also work at the Memphis School of Preaching. Thrilled to be here and looking forward to the program. B.J. and Don, I appreciate so much you guys being on the program tonight, and I appreciate your biblical knowledge. And as we discuss this subject tonight, it's really a subject that I've never really thought about dealing with in a program like this, but I think it's a, a good program, good, good subject matter. And so what about boycotting? BJ, if you were to define the word boycott, what, what would, say, Webster or someone else have to say about that? Well, that's interesting uh, that you ask that because some of the definitions of boycott have to do with, uh, for example, it says uh, to engage in a concerted refusal to have dealings with a person a store, an organization, it's usually to express disapproval or to force acceptance of certain conditions. And uh, some other definitions suggest that it has to do with uh, trying to, uh, well this one says, withdraw from commercial or social relations as a punishment or protest. But then another one says something that forbids relations with certain groups. And so there are some places in the Bible that do uh, demand that we boycott false teachers, for example, sure. and not support them in their teachings, not to bid them Godspeed, 2 John 9 through 11. Mm -hmm. and, and there are, are times when we are to mark certain individuals for the things they teach that are erroneous and to have nothing to do with them. Right. Uh, so it's not to suggest that there's no way in which that word could be used, even though the word boycott does not occur in the translation of the Bible. Uh, the concept of not extending support to a certain teacher mm -hmm. is not foreign to Scripture. Well, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I couldn't help but think about Ephesians chapter 5 when Paul said, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And so there are certain lines of demarcation that are made, biblically speaking. Uh, Don, let, let me ask this question. What's, what's the mindset, the mentality behind boycotting, for example, a particular person, place, uh, maybe a service provider, a product, et cetera? What, what's the catalyst, the driving force? Well, I'm sure there are many different motivations that people have for their actions. Uh, in general, I would say that the goal is to alter the conduct in some way, whether it be a uh, uh, presenting a certain product or endorsing a certain uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to bring them around to a certain mindset, to a certain thought uh, process concerning those matters. Well, that's right. I, I think there, there is a fine line there when we talk about you know, being supportive, et cetera, and extending, I guess, the right hand of fellowship, so to speak. But in our world today, you know, John said the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, lies in darkness. And Jesus said in John chapter 3 that men love darkness rather than light. And so, B.J., would it be wrong for a Christian to boycott uh, maybe an organization, uh, possibly uh, a particular product? Would, would that be permissible based on what the Bible has to say? Right. It, it would not be uh, technically wrong for someone to make that choice. In fact, someone might, uh, based on uh, what some company <laughs> comes right out and says about, uh, I've, I've read of some companies that speak antagonistically, Mike, about uh, Christianity or Christendom in general as they see it. And if you really stop and think about it, uh, I have the right to decide whether I want to go to a certain 
a concert to hear a certain singer, and if that okay. singer is someone that's filthy in their lyrics, I have the right to boycott and say I'm not supporting that individual as long as uh, they are acting and singing that way. I'm not required to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so a Christian definitely has the right to say I'm not going to buy a certain product because I don't particularly like some of the slant of that organization. Mm -hmm. Some of the controversy I think we're probably going to discuss tonight is, is whether we have a right to bind that universally 100% of the time on individuals, but certainly uh, there are certain uh, you know, actors and actresses and uh, singers who become politically known for sure. uh, some of their uh, rabid views, and I don't go out of my way at all to uh, watch them or support them in any way, shape, or form, and certainly uh, would encourage others to consider the same, at least to consider it. Why, well, sure. In, in our day and time, it seems like the liberal left has really gone after those who are more conservative, biblically based. And, and so we have become, in some respects, the whipping post of the media and Hollywood, et cetera. What about a Christian boycotting? Uh, organizations or, or particular products or services, providers that are anti-Christian to the core. H how would you respond to that? Would, would, would that be acceptable? Well, I, I certainly believe that a Christian would have the right to make a decision uh, concerning those situations and those issues. I, I don't want to uh, help someone or to join in in some way with someone who is totally against Christianity, totally against my Lord, against my God. And so I would have that right, and even at times I would say that responsibility to, okay. to pull back from. And as I teach the gospel of Christ to encourage others, this is conduct consistent with what the Bible teaches us. You mentioned Ephesians 5 verse 11 have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And in my estimation, this uh, idea of fellowship is going to play a big role in defining fellowship mm -hmm. and understanding when is fellowship taking place, when is fellowship not taking place. Sure. Those are some of the things I believe that, that have to be answered in this question. I think, I think so. I think so. I've got a caller on the line now. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, sir. This is Ben Estes from Henderson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good to have you on the program tonight. Uh, yes, uh, I noticed tonight's topic, and I heard a comment that you said a couple minutes ago of how uh, certain things, uh, such as false doctrine that Christians should boycott and stand against, um, one one way um, I've noticed that not a lot of preachers in the church do was, uh, and it, this would be a good thing to boycott, um, is the doctrines of televangelists. Uh, there are many things that they teach, like... Uh, say, uh, positive preaching, the gospel of prosperity, things of that nature. And um, I've studied these, and then I've looked at Scripture, and I've turned out, it, it, and it, to, my, to no surprise of mine, they uh, teach things that aren't in the Bible, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and even Creflo Dollar, uh, just to name one. Okay. Um, so one of the things, ways that I sort of boycott is I simply, you know, put pen to paper in, uh, in uh, articles I write for the Unveiled Gospel. Uh, I just simply say, well, you know, they say one thing, but if you look here in Scripture, this says something completely that contradicts that. Sure. So that is just uh, one topic that, that we can stand together uh, for the truth against, and that is the false doctrines of these uh, televangelists. Ben, ben, thank you so much for calling in. And I, I do think that 
that when it comes to many of the televangelists, uh, it, it seems to me like they make merchandise of people. It, it's all about the money. And so oh, we, oh, we need yeah. to be like the noble Bereans who search the scriptures to see whether what we hear is found in the Bible. That's right. Uh, so thank you so much for calling in, Ben. Thank you very, very much. Yes, sir. Got an email question now. When Paul talks about meat offered to idols in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, he never talks about boycotting, even though the meat that was being purchased would have supported a pagan temple. Does Paul's silence on this subject imply something? How would you guys respond to that? Well, I don't know that Paul was exactly silent on it. Uh, you study in other passages, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 10, Romans chapter 14, and there were times when he said that we should abstain from those meats offered to idols, uh, depending on the circumstance and, and how you receive it and what you know when you sit down to the table. And so there would be some situations where Paul said, you don't participate, don't partake of that. And so um, I would say that there are some situations where we need to recognize that simply because I purchase an item in a market mm -hmm. does not mean that I endorse everything that market sells. That's right. And uh, it doesn't mean that I would partake of everything that that mm -hmm. market sells or would even endorse what they do with my money that I give them for that item. Sure. And so, again, it goes back to the idea, how are we going to define fellowship and, and what is fellowship and what's not fellowship? I, I think so. I, I want to get back to something very quickly because BJ was talking about Ephesians chapter 5 a moment ago, and I appreciate those comments very, very much. But in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, there are really two components there. One is to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but then the second part of that is to expose them. And, and I was thinking in preparation for this program tonight about how in many respects, the liberal left, the anti-God, anti-Bible movement in many ways have, have been so, I guess, aggressive yes. in, and militant in, in their agenda that it, it's, it, it seems to me like possibly they have uh, made, made uh, I guess, an atmosphere where in many respects Christians stand down rather than stand up. You know, uh, I, it's funny you say that because I found an article on the internet written by humanist. Mm -hmm. Of course, humanism says up with man and down with God and they're uh, anti any need of a savior. The, the article was entitled, Should Humanist Boycott Religious Businesses? Okay. And here's what they say in the opening paragraph. An ongoing debate with some of my atheist humanist friends is whether to patronize businesses which publicly promote their religious views. And she gives examples, uh, stores that play music year round, that flaunt signs about Jesus or that have the number of a biblical verse on a business card. I've always tried to avoid these businesses and nicely explain why. And she said, some of my friends feel that unless a business is totally blatant about their religion, we should just let it go. But I see letting it go as a part of a larger problem of encouraging Christians to view the USA as a Christian nation. And I think it's every citizen's job to help keep church and state separate. I believe by taking a stand on smaller issues like businesses publicly promoting their religion, we're giving a stronger message about the necessity of church and state separation what do you think? And then this person responds uh, to that and says, well, that's a very individual choice. And what I found interesting is there's an admission here that uh, there are times when a boycott uh, is effective because of the economic impact. If it were not, then they wouldn't be looking for a way to try to damage these, quote, Christian businesses. Take a Chick-fil-A, for example, not to try to give them any free advertising, but mm -hmm. just because of what happened a few years ago, you'll recall, mm -hmm. when their founder uh, came out and uh, some of the relatives uh, of Mr. Kathy came out with the idea that um, same-sex marriage was incompatible with God's will and that they were opposed to it. Mm -hmm. They weren't even allowed, he wasn't even allowed to believe that without a huge 
uh, attempt to orchestrate a boycott of Chick-fil-A, which turned into those who believe what the Bible says about this subject going to the stores in mass numbers saying, we support what you're saying. So, in that case, we live in a country, fortunately, where both parties had the right either to not go right. or to go and say, I want to give you my dollars. It was complete. I, I would not say that if a Christian didn't go to Chick-fil-A on that day that they somehow didn't love the truth about mm-hmm. marriage. But neither would I say that, uh, you know, someone else just by being there was necessarily doing all that God wanted them to be in other areas. But the point I'm making is, is that they're militant. Mm-hmm. You mentioned it a moment ago. Yeah. They're very aggressive, those people who are opposed to Christian values. Sure. And so there's a sense in which, whereas we can't go crazy and we can't be inconsistent right. to the point of binding where God hasn't bound, we do need to stand up for groups like Hobby Lobby mm-hmm. who stood up for uh, the truth on this subject of, uh, you know, not uh, buying pre- reproductive services sure. uh, for those who uh, are against abortion. And, and you know, B.J., the thing, the thing that I find interesting, you mentioned Chick-fil-A. When, when they took that stand, that, that stand per se, it, it seems to me like their, their business skyrocketed. It did. You know, Mike, uh, uh, in Austin, one of the uh, uh, managers, owner of the Chick-fil-A there by the church building is a member there. He said they had a record uh, business that day, never had a higher day before up until that day. And, uh, you know, I, I think that push comes to shove. There are a lot of folks that, you know, when they've had enough, when they've had a right. belly full, that they'll stand out. I, I know that the local Chick-fil-A here in the Olive Branch area, uh, the, the guy that owns it, very nice fella, uh, know him and super, super individual. And he told me his sales have tripled in mm-hmm. that one location. So, so I do think that there, and, and it could be that we are the silent majority right. and, and we're allowing the, uh, th- those in really the, the liberal left and, and they're uh, a vocal minority to, to have their way. And so maybe we do need to stand up. Well, Edmund Burke once said, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to sit idly by. That's right. And uh, I believe it was Emerson that, that pointed out that truth or error rather encircles the earth while truth is putting on its boots. We need to get out there and get busy with, with truth. Well, you know, you know, and that's a great point. And, and both of you guys, I think, make excellent points. When I look at the preaching and teaching and missionary endeavors of the Apostle Paul, it strikes me how when Paul came to cities that were overrun with, for example, idolatry, immorality, Athens would be one, Corinth would be another one. Rather than just saying, you know what, those guys wouldn't be interested in the gospel and and moving on down the road, Paul went right in to those uh, cities and preached the gospel. Right. And, And it had tremendous effects. And so it could be the case that, that we don't have enough faith in the power of the gospel and, and, and maybe, maybe another, I guess, maybe a side addendum to that is uh, we, we just aren't, aren't doing what we ought to do to speak up for truth. Right. Another right. question's come in. What about the argument, how do you boycott one for this, one anti-Christian position, but none of the businesses are pure Christian and support some sin? So how do we choose? And I think that's a fair question. How do we pick and choose? My thought is that, uh, look, we'd all like for everyone in the United States of America to be a New Testament Christian, the way, just the way the Bible says that they ought to be. Uh, But I also would rather live next door to someone who believed in God and believed in the moral values of God's Word than I would a rabid atheist who is out to live for self or a homosexual couple that's putting that on display in front of my children. Uh, And so, though I wouldn't endorse every single thing that someone might believe or say, I can definitely endorse. Mm -hmm. I can endorse uh, whatever someone believes that is according to Scripture. And if they say there's a God in Heaven, I can endorse that. If they say that uh, we ought to uh, practice you know, uh, purity, and uh, t- if they want to teach abstinence in school, they may be wrong on some other issues, but mm-hmm. I'm glad they're teaching a sexual abstinence sure. prior to marriage because that matches Hebrews 13, 4, and 5. 
Now, where they are deviating from God's Word, I'm not going to follow, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be thankful for uh, the righteous principles that are upheld and try to teach even more righteous principles to keep on improving. I think great point. We're going to take a break now and we'll be back in just one moment to continue our study. Thank you for tuning in to GBN Live. If you have a question related to tonight's topic that you would like to have answered, please call 888-805-3390. That's 888-805-3390. You can also email us at gbnlive at gbntv.org. Like us on Facebook and follow us live each week. You can send your questions through Facebook in the comments section, and we will do our best to get them answered on the air. Now back to the program. Sinners shall be pardoned, right and left. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready for the judgment day? Glad to have you back with us. We're going to continue our study on boycotts, responsible or ridiculous. B.J. and Don, I want to ask this question. Are there alternatives to boycotting, in other words, to get our point across to certain people, organizations, services, service providers, that we disagree with what they're doing? Well, I believe that the uh, spread of the gospel is going to uh, certainly let people know where we stand as New Testament Christians. And in letting them know where we stand, we're going to let them know what we oppose. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know that we, I'm talking about the Lord's church right now, mm -hmm. I don't know that we are as fervent as we should be in taking the gospel to a lost world. I would agree. And understanding that we have a responsibility to hit every soul, a responsibility to hit every person that is in this world. Now, if I go and I teach someone and in teaching them, I let them know the new creature mm -hmm. is not going to follow after drunkenness, mm -hmm. is not going to imbibe in an alcoholic beverage. If I teach individuals that, then that's letting them know we ought to abstain from that and, and stay away from it. Why, sure. And uh, the boycott will come naturally as lives are changed. One soul at a time, uh, but we've got to get out and, and affect more souls. Both, both of you guys are involved in training preachers. And I appreciate the fact that you have devoted your lives to preaching and teaching and trying to cultivate an atmosphere where others want to learn and ultimately preach the gospel. And, and you mentioned a moment ago how maybe we have lacked the fervor that, that we ought to have in spreading the gospel. How, how do you think that we overturn may, maybe the, uh, the lethargic attitude among many in the church? Because we talk about change and affecting change. And, and, and I know that politically we put a lot of confidence, people put a lot of confidence in certain political parties. But ultimately, isn't the gospel God's power to really affect change in the world? Without question. In Matthew chapter 5, uh, it is in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus said that uh, we're the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Men don't light a candle and then hide it. No, they put it on a candlestick so it's seen by everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, let your light so shine. In so many places, some are falling for the idea that, hey, you know, that's too aggressive to let our light shine. Meanwhile, while we kind of... Uh, Received. Revert back, yeah, yeah. Go back into the the dark shadows. Satan is out there, you know, sh with his servants shouting from the mountaintops. Uh, the Bible says that we're salt and light, and the salt is a preservative, and we ought to be preserving the moral principles of our culture as much as possible, and not just capitulating to the aggressive ways of those around us for fear that we'll be called unloving. We can stand for what's right without being unloving. We can do you're, both. You're exactly right, B.J. As a matter of fact, if you go back and look at the Old Testament prophets, God used them in a mighty way to thunder His message 
to people that were caught up in sin. I think about Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 58, when Isaiah said, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. In other, in other words, don't even hold back. Right. He said, tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. And so it's incumbent on us to realize that the power, the, the medium uh, of gospel truth and what that can do to a lost and dying world. And well, you know, it strikes me, just came to my mind while you were saying that, what Paul did with Felix in Acts chapter 24 and verse 25 is what we need to be doing with our neighbors, with our co-workers, our relatives, our friends. He reasoned of righteousness, temperance, temperance and judgment to come. And when he did, Felix trembled and answered, of course, go thy way for this time when I have a convenient season, I'll call for thee. Paul was not afraid to engage in the conversation, the difficult conversation, right. to get down to what is right. And we've still got to get back to the fact there's a righteous standard. All of God's commandments are righteousness, Psalm 119, 172. And it's our job to make those righteous commandments known to our fellow man and to live by them ourselves, to model a behavior that shows the blessings of living by God's commands, mm -hmm. and to teach our children to do that and to pass it on to their children, our grandchildren, whatever the case might be. Right. And so we, we've got to uh, reason with people about righteousness, temperance, and judgment, judgment to come. This is, this is not a playground. It's a dressing room for eternity. Look at, uh, look at Acts 17 when Paul went to the city of Athens. The Bible says his spirit was stirred within him because the whole city was given over to idolatry. Uh, he burned within. And in declaring the one true living God to those people, he talked about the judgment to come. Right. The fact that, that one day God would hold all people accountable. I've got another question that's come in via Facebook. Is there a company that the three of you have made the choice not to spend your money with? And so by way of, I guess, a personal question. Well, I don't, I don't spend any money with uh, <laughs> uh, Anheuser-Busch, uh, yeah, Coors, uh, right. those right. things. Uh, I, don't, I don't buy cigarettes or tobacco. Well, the, myself, I agree with that. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, th th there are, uh, let me ask, answer the question in more of a general way. Okay. Uh, there are some companies that I have made the judgment, and, sure. and I underline that part. Point. And, and you know what, I think on the flip side of that, there are companies, for example, that are run by New Testament Christians right. Right. that I have chosen to do business with right. because of that trust factor right. and, and because I have respect and, and confidence in, in them as people. And when I have options, I certainly have every right to use those to try to, uh, for example, just this week, I stayed in a hotel chain that though they may not be perfect in all that they believe, teach, and practice, I drove by another hotel. It's not a brand name hotel, but it's, it's one that advertises, if you can believe it, <clears throat> adult entertainment is a part of their stay there at this hotel. And it's hard to believe that that's available so close to the city. And I'm surprised zoning ordinances even allow it. Sure. But as I drove by that place every night uh, while I was preaching in a meeting recently, I thought to myself, you know, I would not stay there. I could not stay there in good conscience knowing that that is their direct uh, that, that's their, agenda. Their deal. That's so right. That doesn't mean that uh, there wouldn't be some ethical problems elsewhere. There was another more well-known hotel chain some years ago that started offering adult movies in the room. If you wanted to purchase them, you didn't have to, but you could. And so I made a conscious choice to avoid them when I had an option that was available to right. me that was better that didn't have that. Now, does that mean the place I was staying didn't have some of their own issues? Well, no, but I didn't know what they were and I wasn't knowingly supporting that. And right. to me, it was definitely the better choice for me. Now, I would not say to someone if I found out they stayed at that one hotel, not the first one I mentioned, but the second one, mm -hmm. that they were automatically sinning by going to that hotel because they might not even know yeah. about uh, the in-room movies that you could buy or things of that nature. And so I think we have to be careful not to paint with too broad of a brush, gotcha. but uh, the Bible is clear on this. A lot of wisdom. Got a caller on the line. Tommy Shul is with us tonight. Tommy, good to have you on the program. Hey, Mike. Look, uh, I know it's, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot in the Bible about boycotting, but what come to my mind was the, the Grecian widows in 
in Act 6. You know, uh, I don't know what they did to get the attention. They were murmuring, but uh, they got the attention of the, the leaders, and they done something about it. And so they were, in a, in a sense, boycotting, or they were complaining. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, thank you for the call, Brother Tommy. Thank you very much. And, and of course, the apostles remedied that situation by uh, delegating the work to men that had the ability to carry out this work and see that the widows were. And really, if you think about it, communication is a part of what a boycott is. It's not, it's basically letting someone know, here are our concerns. Yeah. And though they might not have withheld their fellowship from the apostles or gone to the same extremes, it wasn't a matter of buying goods or services. Uh, it was an organized effort to let folks know we have an issue That's right. and it was dealt with. And so uh, in that case, I can see what uh, I can see the point. Yeah. Uh, let me just take this opportunity to share with those in our viewing audience tonight an interview that I had earlier this afternoon with Tim Wildman, who is the president of AFA. He wasn't able to be with us tonight, but he was kind enough to call earlier today, and so I had the opportunity to talk with him about some of their efforts in past boycotts. And so we'll listen to that right now. We've been around 40 years now, American Family Association, started by my dad, Don Wildman, to help Christians respond to the culture. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the ways we've done that over the years is using our pocketbooks. Sure. And uh, we used, used to encourage people to do that with stores that sold pornography, we just asked people to not shop there. Sure. You know, not give them their money. That worked pretty successfully. Uh, we, I think we got 30, including the 7-Eleven chain, but we got 30 or 40,000 stores, maybe more, 50,000 stores during the 80s and 90s to take their porn magazines out. Really? I would uh, say that's very successful. Yeah, very successful. And then... Uh, uh, Last Temptation of Christ movie. We basically stopped that by petitioning the uh, movie theaters not to carry that blasphemous film uh -huh. uh, across the country. Less than 1% of the theaters carried it. So that was a success. And we've had other ones over the years. Sure. Uh, I, I can't remember them all. I, I understand. But what now a, we're focused on Target. Yeah, I, I noticed that uh, you guys had, had taken some 1.5 million uh, signatures to Target and then an additional half a million signatures and they, they still haven't made any concessions. Do you do you feel like you've made some headway with them? Well, two things there. One is, uh, yes, we made headway in the sense that they lost a lot of money, uh -huh. a lot of business, a lot of customers. Their stock's down $15 billion over a year, wow. the, the value of it. So, uh, and their their customer traffic's way down sure. uh, what it, from what it was. And by way down, I mean, all you gotta do is affect these companies like you know, a couple percentage points, and they hurt. And, oh, absolutely. And we've been able we've been able to do that. But the but the other thing is, it stopped a lot of these corporations from doing the same thing Target did when they saw what happened to Target. Uh huh. And so, uh, so I mean, it stopped it dead in the tr tracks. Uh, do you think that we, as Bible believing people, that we've allowed, for example, the the liberal left or the liberal left agenda to bully us and cause us to to possibly stand down when we ought to be standing up. Yeah, well, a lot of Christians, unfortunately, are intimidated by the by the left, uh, the media, the entertainment industry, and you know, this the uh, powerful people sure. that are anti-Christian, uh, and a lot of people don't want to be called haters and bigots and homophobes and Islamophobes and uh -huh. all the names they throw at you. Sure, sure. Uh, so if you're gonna if you're gonna you know, not fight because of that reason, and you might as well not even get started because yeah. that comes with the territory. Uh, we as Christians, you know, when you stand for truth and righteousness and morality, uh, the, you know, Jesus tells us himself there in, in, in Matthew chapter 6 or 5, mm -hmm. Beatitudes, he said, you stand up for righteousness, you're going to be persecuted. That's exactly right. Uh, I mean, so... Uh, that's so you take a stand against the world you're going to be persecuted now you don't go out nobody goes out looking for a fight that's or right. looking for a, a persecution but it's just naturally going to come your way when you stand up for God's word 
Sure. And you're opposed by the world, which, as we know, is blinded by darkness. Christians uh, need to band together because, you know, there's a lot of opposition today, and we've got to keep sharing the gospel and trying to change the world with the good news. Uh, at the same time, we don't need to lose our country. At some point, you get the hostility turns into taking away your freedoms. Well, that's exactly right. Um, you know, a lot of connect- Christians don't make that connection, unfortunately. Uh-huh. Uh, and we'll hear a criticism from our brothers. Well, you just need to share the gospel, stay out of that political stuff. And uh, that, that's spoken out of ignorance oftentimes. People don't understand that. Absolutely. You have to be involved in politics. If we're not, then we're going to leave all our laws and lawmaking and judge decisions to the pagans. Unfortunately, the modern-day Democrat parties rebuked us. The Republican Party is about the, is the only party that accepting still of Christians sure. who believe in pro-life and pro-family and traditional values. We've been run off from the Democrat Party, at least on a national level. Most Christians identify as Republicans for that reason. Sure. I, I think what you said about if, if we stand by and do nothing, we're going to lose this country. And so it's incumbent on us yes, to well, stand up and speak out. You're right. Well, it's like you got to play a game, right? A football game. That's right. And and the other team's on the field, and, you, and your team doesn't even get off the bus. That's right. That's exactly. Well, you well, you you're not, you may win, you may lose, but you're certainly going to lose if you don't get off the bus. You don't get out on the field and play so and fight for uh, for your side. So that's what we uh, that's what AFA has been about. Well, trying to encourage Christians to stand up as you as you guys do there. Sure. Well, listen, listen, Tim, thank you so much for taking some time to be with us tonight. I appreciate. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you sharing uh, what what you guys are doing and, and really appreciate your time and, and your expertise Absolutely. in this area. And uh, thank Glad you very much. People can go to our website, afa.net, afa.net, for more information on, on what we're doing and if they want to sign up and join us. Okay. Hey, listen, thank you so much. That was an interesting clip, and and I guess one of the questions that we have for this program tonight: Do boycotts really work? And I think his his response was, "Yes, they do." And as you said, BJ, earlier, when you get into people's pocketbooks, you can affect a lot of change. Well, you know, listen to this quote that comes from that same humanist article, closing paragraph. Uh, this lady says, "As you note, it's absolutely terrifying." how the delusion the USA is a Christian nation or any kind of religious nation seems to be gaining more traction every day. I would say it's terrifying that uh, we're getting more and more secular every day, but she thinks that, you know, religion is becoming more and more prominent. She says, we need to take steps, both large and small, to counter that. So it's a great idea to inform businesses that you won't shop where their religious freedom is encroaching on others. Money talks when you spend or withhold it in support of your views. If that's true, going from the direction of the humanist towards the religious, Mm -hmm. it's also true from the religious toward those who are trying to lead us in the wrong direction. And we've got to stand up, Mike. Um, I was thinking during that clip of this statement that's very famous, when the Nazis were rising, a lot of Germans were reluctant to stand up against them. And some of you might remember this quote. It's in the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum. Great quotation. First they came for the socialist, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. And if we as religious people who love our religious freedoms aren't careful and we don't start exercising some degree of power and uh, communication to people, look, we have every right to choose not to buy your product, to go to your movies, to watch, to listen to your music, to buy your videos, to do whatever. If we can send that message loud enough and strong enough, on an individual case-by-case basis, Mm -hmm. then uh, certainly we can say, look, we are a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. And though I would not presume to be the one who would dictate to every single listener or viewer tonight what they have to boycott and what they don't have to boycott, I would say that we could all use scriptural principles and try to follow uh, to the best of our ability, you know, some degree of consistency wherein that's possible. Well, no doubt. 
to me, to me, the most urgent point of, uh, of that interview and this show is that we've got to be active. Yeah, I think so. We've got to get out and we've got to engage in the war against sin, against Satan, against uh, that which jeopardizes the souls of men. And, and again, there are judgment matters on I will shop here, I won't shop there. But we do not have the judgment to say, I'm going to step back and be silent when air is, is moving the way Amen. that it moves. I, I, love, I love the sentiments of the psalmist when he wrote in Psalm 43, 3, Oh, send out your light and your truth. That's the answer mm -hmm. to what we're talking about, the problems that we're talking about. Does it frighten you? I know that the three of us are baby boomers, and we all grew up in the 60s, et cetera. And you talk about living in a post-Christian nation. Mm -hmm. Did you ever dream that we would be where we are today in terms of our culture? We're made to look like the ignoramuses in the culture when the psalmist said, through thy commandments you've made me wiser than mine enemies, verse 98. I have more understanding than all my teachers, verse 99. I understand more than the ancients, the ancient philosophers, verse 100. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word, 101. And then verse 104, through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Amen. And we've got to do that. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Because as, as was said a moment ago, this is a post-Christian nation in, in the sense that there was a day and time when many people in this country did believe in the one true, true living God. They did believe in the inspiration of Scripture. Not so today. And you could bring up a Bible discussion and say, well, the Bible says, and people would say, okay, what does the Bible say? And they were right. actually interested to see what the Bible said. Now, they might disagree with you on what it said or didn't say, and that's a matter for another program perhaps. But the point is there was a common belief a common this bond. book had the answers. The scary thing today, Mike, is that a lot of people look at the Bible and say, so what? Well, that's true. Who cares what it says? That, that right. is sad. That is sad. Another caller who didn't want to be on the air tonight, but he asked this question, when denominations are having bake sales, car washes, et cetera, should we boycott? I guess, I should we be supportive? Would, okay. uh, I would stay away from it. I would boycott it. Uh, the reason is, I know where that money's going to go. And when I drive into that, whoever sees me goes in there, knows where that money's going to go. And if it, in First Thessalonians 5:22, it says, "Abstain from every appearance of evil." Mm -hmm. You and I do have to take a time to consider what is my action going to say to others. Now, let me give an example along these lines. If I go into a grocery store. They sell alcohol there, beer. They sell cigarettes there, but they also sell bread and meat and so forth. I go into that store, there's no one that's going to automatically assume that I'm an alcoholic or that I'm going in there to buy beer or I'm going in there, they're assuming I'm going to go shopping. If I go into a liquor store, Hold they scenario. know what I'm doing. That's right. And so I would say in that sense, a denomination, I'm not going to support them anyway. Mm -hmm. I will boycott them. I will not go in there. And I don't want anyone thinking I would go in there. Well, I think well said. Well said. That's the difference between direct support and indirect. I mean, we don't, we don't directly support uh, a liquor store, obviously, for obvious reasons. I might go to a store that uh, sells liquor, but I'm not there to directly support that. I may be indirectly that's right, involved. That's right. We've got one more email question that we'd like to take before our break. Amazon.com supports same-sex marriage. Can we in good conscience accept their donation? I read, uh, I read something in preparation with this. You know, that's where I guess you get into the, the difficult thing of trying to be absolutely consistent. For example, uh, there is this index that I don't know if a lot of people are aware of. It's called the human, it's called the Corporate Equality Index. Mm -hmm. And it's a survey distributed by the Human Rights Campaign that measures support for LGBT employees and the LGBT community. And uh, things that are similar as same-sex marriage cultural issues, and uh, a number of these organizations have received <coughs> uh, scores of uh, like 100. For example, McDonald's received a 100 on their HRC index. Uh, 
are we, and then banks, a number of banks do, airlines, a number of airlines, and most of the major car dealers, uh, a number of the uh, home appliance stores, uh, <coughs> on and on we could go. And so if, w if one is, is not careful, they can get to the point of trying to draw the line so finely that, that they're not able to, to be consistent. And so I, I think we have to be cautious and not knowingly advance any agenda that's uh, trying to destroy you know, Christian thinking. But at the same time, we may not even know all that a certain uh, store believes. And uh, we can't be responsible for every single thing their owners uh, might believe. This is your time in history. This is your time. Now we've got to stand. We've got to stand. We've got to stand. to look the devil in his own ugly eye. We've got to let him know we're not going another father. What the Lord is saying is you're the light of the world. It's you. It's you. And what we got to do is be happy about being children of God. This is our time in history to do what God wants us to do. GBN Live is brought to you by Churches of Christ. If you have any thoughts or concerns about tonight's content, please write to us at 8900 Germantown Road, Olive Branch, Mississippi, 38654. Our email address is gbnlive at gbntv.org. Feel free also to call us at 888-805-3390. To view past episodes of GBN Live, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash GBN TV. Just search for Gospel Broadcasting Network and don't forget to click subscribe for updates on new episodes and to see when GBN goes live. GBN is also available on Roku, Apple TV, iPhone, iPad, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. To find out more, visit GBNTV.org. Welcome back. I apologize. I've been battling some allergy problems and still feel like I'm down in a can right now, but hopefully I'll fight my way back in just a moment or two. We do have another Facebook question that's come in. What about stores like Target and Home Depot that have openly and publicly accepted sin, for example, homosexuality and transgender couples? You know, I, I look at our society today and my question is, as far as those companies of the world, which ones really have not? I know there are some. I, uh, Chick-fil-A was mentioned, Hobby Lobby was mentioned, and I certainly appreciate their stands and have no problem doing business there. But uh, there's a sense in which I think it gets back to the fellowship issue. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, if a brother is in fornication, I'm told don't even sit down and eat with him. That's a fellowship action. Sure. But it says also there that uh, if unbelievers... Uh, or fornicators that I don't withdraw myself there because I have responsibilities. I have uh, to have an influence there and, and that I am to understand that if we were to withdraw ourselves altogether, uh -huh. then how could we have the influence that God wants to have to be the light that we should be, the salt that we should be as Brother That's BJ right. was talking about earlier. Sure. And my going into those stores does not cause someone to automatically conclude, well, Don Walker agrees with the gay movement and the yeah. lesbian movement. Yeah. Don, they see me going in there, Don Walker's trying to do some work at his house, emphasizing trying that's on right, that. That's, but, right. uh, I understand. Uh, I understand. that's the deal. That's a lot of the uh, issue on the question in my mind. Well, I think you're right. I think the you're right. The Amazon thing was mentioned earlier. I got to thinking about it. I know of a, a number of Christian publishers who uh, sell books uh, that are purchased through the Amazon website, that would not imply an endorsement of all that Amazon stands for. 
it is using a service. If I'm a mailman and I deliver the mail, for all I know, someone that I'm delivering mail to has ordered a pornographic magazine, and if I put that in their mailbox as the mailman, that would not imply an endorsement of their participation of the same, and so I think that has to be, uh, there are a lot of factors to this, and you know, no, those who act like it's so, uh, you know, there's never any value to a boycott, I couldn't go along with that. Those who act like I've got every single thing figured out on boycotting this, and, uh, but then what about, uh, you've got this organization over here that has these views, so you don't go to this store because of this, but this store has these views, and now where are you going to go? So you, at some point it becomes unfortunate that uh, we're in a position where we can't always find just the right place that we'd like to find, uh, and so we have to try to just do the best we can with the information we have. You, you know what I appreciate about the two of you is I think for this program you have brought balance and a biblical perspective, reason and revelation. And, and really that's what it's all about, is trying to be balanced but also be biblical. And another Facebook question that's come in, other than boycotting, how can we get to the ones making these stands? I've heard of people say it's wrong for a Christian to work at certain companies like Target. I disagree with that. How, how would you respond to that? <clears throat> well again, it goes back to the, the context and the, the definition of fellowship and what's the biblical view of fellowship. Does my association uh, working mm -hmm. with someone or working with a company, does that automatically define me as endorsing everything that is there? Sure. Uh, what about a grocery store? Can I work in a grocery store who sells items that I know that are sinful? Uh, can I work for a boss who I know is uh, doing something that ought not to be done? Sometimes it's just a matter, it's as simple as I'm working to provide for my family so I'm not considered worse than an infidel. Would, would, it, would there be a difference in somebody working at a grocery store that sells alcohol and cigarettes and working at a bar? Well, or, exactly. Or for exactly. A, uh, because a bar, a, a bar yeah. has a certain definition, a certain uh, uh, thought that's associated with it and uh, would draw certain conclusions. He works at a bar. Well, what, what do bars do predominantly? They sell alcohol. He must be in agreement with alcohol. I work at a grocery store that sells beer and so forth, but that doesn't necessarily the mean that I join in. Different. Right. And, and so back to uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from every appearance of evil. Working in a bar is going to say something that I do not want to say as a Christian. Agreed. Working in a grocery store says a lot more and doesn't really just say, well, Don sells beer or he's an alcoholic or this or that. It says he's providing for his family and he's taking care uh, of his, his, uh, those that he ought to take care of. Sure. And so the fellowship, does it, is it an endorsement of everything? No, I don't believe so. To work at Target uh, doesn't mean I endorse every policy that Target has. I, agree. I used to uh, do some radio spots for a radio station and uh, advertise uh, grocery stores and things of that nature. By doing that I was not in any way, shape or form encouraging people to buy every item in the store. However, when the lady that ran the radio station came to me and handed me some copy where it read like this, so if your church needs a new organ, contact Wurlitzer today. I told her, I said, I can't read this, I can't do this, I preach against instrumental music. Sure on this very radio pro station and I can't have my same voice be heard encouraging people to go buy an organ when the Bible teaches against it. So, you know, it's direct and indirect. You have to try to figure out which one is, is going on there. I think so. I think so. Another question's come in via Facebook. In word or deed do all in the name of the Lord. If I purchase a product that supports a lifestyle different from what God says, then am I sinning? <clears throat> I think that was a statement made uh, there rather than a question. They said, I am sinning. Uh, I, I believe the comments should be along those lines. Uh, you know, if it, is, uh, uh, if it is a product that 
is defining yes. that lifestyle, then I would agree wholeheartedly. I will say this, there is a brand of ice cream, which I will not mention, okay. which I happen mm -hmm. to like some of their varieties, but they're so absolutely liberal in their thinking. In fact, even have named some of their ice creams to support liberal thoughts and causes. I cannot conscientiously support them. And so I think, you know, they're, uh, it's, a lot of it has to do with what you know. I might unknowingly support something, but then there's a matter of knowingly supporting it. And if I wouldn't knowingly engage in it. Sure, sure. Another question that we have, do we like courage and conviction when it comes to pulling our support of products and services? I guess that would be individual Christians per se. Do we lack courage, courage and conviction, conviction to pull our support? Or I guess to withhold monetary support or buy their products, services, et cetera. I'm not sure that I understand completely. I mean, we, the we might lack information. Okay. Uh, you know, and some might lack courage. I can't speak for everyone and what uh -huh. their reasons are for purchasing or not purchasing a product. But I can say in my own case, I don't knowingly support gen agendas that are trying to promote uh, anti Christian that things. Is. And yet, at the same time, I might unknowingly uh, purchase something that that would uh, do that. But once I found out, I, that would uh, determine my future behavior. Absolutely. One final question that's come in: What about being a cashier that has to that has to have a liquor license to to check out beer? I personally would not want to apply for a liquor license, and therefore, that would keep me from taking that job. Uh, it's just something I would not do, and. Uh, I would do that based on my conviction against what the Bible teaches concerning sure. liquor and drunkenness and, and even the social partaking of liquor. Got about two minutes left. Very quickly, how would you sum up what we've talked about today in terms of boycotting and Christians? I, I think we, one emphasis would be that we need to be a people who take a stand for truth and that we need to be very careful that we don't engage in an activity or support something that would leave the wrong message. Uh, now, just because someone might say you're saying this with your action doesn't necessarily mean that. But uh, we do have to take uh, a care about how we conduct ourselves sure. and what we proclaim by our actions. That's right. To the best of my ability, I don't want to be unequally yoked together with that which is wrong. I don't want to have fellowship with righteousness and unrighteousness. And I want to come out from among that as much as I can, as much as I knowingly can, and be separate and touch not the unclean thing, as Second Corinthians six fourteen and following uh, talks about. And so uh, I want to try to stay informed and measure everything that I do as much as I can through the Scriptures. I think sage advice for everyone. Thank you so much for being a part of our program tonight. We appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you guys. Couldn't have done it without you. Appreciate your wisdom and your Bible knowledge. And thank you. Hope to see you right back here again next Thursday night as we continue to look at what the Bible has to say. And we will see you right back here at that time. God bless. This has been GBN Live. Thank you for watching.